Yo. All right. What's going on, family? Welcome. My camera's dark because I got on a white shirt. Got on my Morris shirt. Bam. Looking fly. Don't I look fly in this Morris shirt? These Morris shirts are going to go on sale next week, by the way. Promoting the brand new website that's coming soon. Morris. Man, when I wear white, it, it darkens the, the lighting. So y'all excuse the light. People might think that it's Akon over here broadcasting, but it's really me. Got on the more rust for rust shirt. And I'm ready to chop up that ism. Get this, let me get my lighting together because I don't want this light beaming in my face. So I might have to be a little dark in the room. But nevertheless, I'm here. Oh yeah, this shirt is on. It's the business, ain't it? Like I said, it's going to go on sale next week. He said, my shirt need an iron. Well, I had to throw it on because I was humping your mom, nigga. So I had to throw it on real quick and had to wipe titty juice off my leg. So I couldn't iron it like I should have. Fuck out of here. All right. We're in the house. We're in here. We are in here. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm ready to chop up some very good game. What's up, Economic? You said you're heading to Egypt next week. Oh, man, you're going to have a ball out there, man. You're going to have a ball out there in the motherland of Africa. You dig? No, we only got it in white. The Mora shirts are only going to be in white. But they look fly. Like I said, they'll be on sale sometime next week. So y'all just... Y'all get it popping. Y'all wait for that. Let me shout out the room real quick. Let me see who's in the room. We're in the room heavy already. We got Texas Lady, Pride, Moz G, Milo Based, Count Mac, Trade215, um, 3357 Theory, Solo Sun, Brian, Trey Star, Bartholomew, DJ Incog, Big, D Nice. A shout, uh, speaking of that, that reminds me of a DJ. All my L.A. dudes, any DJs out here? Because I need somebody to DJ at the comedy club when we do the Coon Train Awards. So we need a house DJ. So when my players out here in L.A., my house DJs, man, we need a house DJ to um, come play at the Coon Train Awards. All you got to do is just spin songs. Nothing major. want y'all to email me, man. My email is um, kflex. The number four, life at yahoo.com. Kflex for life at yahoo.com. We need a DJ for the Coon Train Award celebration. You understand that? And we need somebody who's thorough as the DJ. All right? Preferably some of my young players. Preferably some of my young players. I don't want no... Old ass cat come to here talking about he gonna DJ and be bumping shit like this. Bedroom dinettes. Oh yeah, you can find them at the market. We talking about this nigga bumping this shit. Montgomery, it's just like it's just like a man. I'm a DJ, baby. Oh yeah, come shop. Oh yeah, it's in the market. Montgomery. So I want a DJ, DJ, somebody who can really get it popping. All right, so my email. Is um again kflex for life at yahoo.com. That's my email. And we're gonna have so much fun at the Coon Train Awards. I cannot wait for the Coon Train Awards. We're gonna have a ball. And I'll, I'll, let me thank everybody for their votes. We're still taking in votes. If you go to plantationcelebration.com, that's the official website for the Coon Train Awards. There's a link on there where you can take a survey and vote for who you think should be nominated in certain categories. And I want you, we, we've gotten thousands of votes already. And we want you to, we need more voters. We need, I mean, we want people to give more input. Especially, we, we threw up a, a couple of new categories too that we need some input on. So we got the Caucasian Coon category. Um, a lot of people voted for the Hip Hop Coon. Um, <laughs> we got some great categories, by the way. Also, this is a where's Aki? Aki in here? Everybody start mentioning Aki. Are you in here, Aki? Or people just yelling your name? People like to say Aki's name. 
So I don't think Aki's in here right now. Let me look for the O's. I think people are just mentioning her name just for the sake of mentioning her name. Hoping that she'll come in the room. What's up? We got my man Ola in the house, though. Shout out to Ola. Everybody give it up to Ola. My assistant in the house. Ola's going to be rolling with me on the More Rust Tour. The More Rust Tour is coming to a city near you. The More Rust Tour starts on April 23rd. We're going to be in Miami on April 23rd. We're going to have a ball in Miami. Also, we're going to be in New York City April 25th. That's a Monday. We're going to have a ball out there. Also, I'm going to be on The Breakfast Club with Charlemagne the God, Envy, and Angela Yee. I'll be on there that morning. So we're going to really represent New York and all my other people in New York. I want to, I got to holler at my people at Sway because the next day, because we're going to be in New York for a few days after the lecture. So we're going to be in New York for a few days. I might, I'm going to holler at my man Combat Jack, might do Combat Jack show again. All my radio, let me holler, have um the Hot 97 people holler. We can hit up Hot 97 while we're out there too and chop it up. So I want to hit up a lot of folks, all my people out there with those who got those lines and those hookups, man, hit me up. I'm, I'm, we already hooked in with Charlemagne and um, 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 Combat Jack. But some of these other people, y'all holler at me if you got a plug on that so we can really make the maximum effect of what we're going to do out there in New York because we're going to do a lot of promotion. The tour is also going to promote the Hidden Colors 4 documentary coming out in May. Hidden Colors 4 will be out in May. Yeah, the link to vote is, let me give the link. Hold on, let me give the link for those who are trying to vote. Let me, um, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Let me allow links in the room, by the way. Allow links, all right. All right, the link is www.plantationlibration. So that's the link. Now, also, when you guys vote for people who you think should be nominated for the Coon Train Award... Some of the categories, we, we have instructions under them stating that such and such has already been nominated, so you don't have to nominate that person again. Because like some of the categories, we get like overwhelming, <laughs> there's an overwhelming amount of people who vote for like, you know, Stacey Dash. Y'all don't have to vote for Stacey Dash and nothing else. <laughs> I think we got about 10,000 Stacey Dash votes. Also, we got a lot of Don Lemon votes, all right? <laughs> so y'all don't have to vote for Don Lemon. We got it. We got it. We are, We know Don Lemon is already nominated, all right? And this is the thing. The, the, the nominees are, are, are selected by the people. So all these, you know, entities that are watching, because the Coons Rain is going, a lot of people are going to be talking about it, because we're going to be streaming it online. <laughs> So when the show is streaming, use the hashtag Coon Train Awards and everybody tweet and they just do the live updates. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Oh, Chris, I, we had to tell people to stop voting for Crispy. Too many Crispy votes. We got an overwhelming amount of Crispy votes. You dig? So also, you know what I need? I need my, my some research cats. I need y'all to send me some links because a lot of people, we got a hip hop coon category. A lot of people were voting for Common. Now, what did Common do exactly? I want to know, what did Common say exactly? Because a lot of people voted for Common and I'm not really sure what Common did that was extra coonish that would, um, I know he said some, it was some, it was very soft shoe, some of the stuff that I've seen from the rapper Common. It was some soft shoe stuff, but it wasn't full blown cooning from what I've seen, unless I've missed something. So what did he say? Okay, I remember he said something about we should fight racism with love, you know. Okay. So what I need, I need people to send me, I need, um, 
some of Don Lemon's. I need a link, a YouTube link, if y'all can email me. And again, my email is kflex4, the number four, life at yahoo.com. Or you can email me at info at tariqelite.com. The kflex4 life at yahoo.com. That's better because that's a direct um, link. Email me a link of Don Lemon's Coonan. Email me a link of some of Raven Simone's Coonan. Email me a link of Ben Carson, too. I need a Ben Carson link of some of his Coonan comments. That's what I need. I need um I need that. I already got Jesse Lee Peterson. Everything out of his mouth is Coonan, so I got that. So that's what it is. Oh yeah, that that sister soul love chick. Nobody takes us seriously anymore. People found out how much of a fraud and how much of a phony she is, and so. So when she came back with her bullshit, nobody took her seriously. Yeah, nobody took her seriously at all. Which I, I warn people about her from day one, so. So a lot of stuff. Yeah, email me that. My email is info at TarikaLeet.com or kflex 4 life at yahoo.com. kflex 4 life at yahoo.com. You know, you know. Speaking of Black Lives Matter, somebody's mentioning some of the Black Lives Matter. I saw an article, and you know what's interesting? When the white supremacists try to tell you who the leaders are, that's always a red flag. When the white supremacists go out of their way to try to tell you who your leaders are, they've been trying to push Black Lives Matter on black society very hard. The white supremacist media, they've been trying to push Black Lives Matter leadership on black society so hard because truth be told, most black people don't really rock with the whole Black Lives Matter crowd, to be honest. Now, that's something that people in black society knows, but in the dominant white society, they're told that Black Lives Matter are the spokespersons for black society, and that is not true. And whenever the mainstream white media keeps telling you over and over and over and over again who your leaders are, that's always a red flag. That's always a red flag. And it was an article that came out again. And again, they've been pushing Netta and, and D. Ray Mackleson and all these dudes. You know, they didn't put Netta on Ebony, not Ebony, put her on um, Essence Magazine, which, which she's already tied in with all that. I've been telling y'all for years, she's tied in with that whole Ebony Essence crew, that whole Bedwench conglomerate. I'm going to get on them in a minute. But she's tied in with them, and they're putting her on the cover. Ooh, this is a black leader. And there was an article that came out recently talking about Black Lives Matter are the greatest black leaders in the world, or some bullshit like that. And I'm like, okay, they're really desperate to push the so-called Black Lives Matter founders. You, you dig? And there's a reason why if people in the dominant mainstream media are giving you too many props or giving a black person props talking about this is the leader, just understand they're doing this because they know that these niggas are bought and paid for. They know that they're not going to be effective. The mainstream media, they know who to prop up and who to salt. They know who to prop up and who to salt. Loretta Lynch put out some uh, a memo of uh, talking about putting sanctions on certain police agencies around the country if they don't 
decriminalize some of the charges that they have because it 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 affects people of color. And I don't like using that term. You know, they got to start talking in code. But some of these laws are affecting people of color so negatively. The Department of Justice, they're telling some of these agencies, hey, you're going to have to decriminalize some of these um, charges that you're putting on people, especially poor people of color. So a lot of them are pushing back. A lot of the white think tanks who work for the mainstream media, because understand this, the mainstream media outlets like the New York Post, New York Times, Fox, and all these people, all of these people, all of, a lot of them, they get their commentators and writers funded from these little secret white supremacist think tanks. They get their funding and they're, they're people who are funded and backed by these white supremacist think tanks. So these people secretly, they, they, they get millions of dollars. They pick and, and invent certain people and then put them out there in the media. This is why a lot of them have the same exact talking points. The, the, the mainstream media is nothing but propaganda. They do not have objective people on there. They know exactly who they're going to put on television. I know D-Ray is running for mayor of Baltimore, and I don't even think he got one vote. Nobody takes um, D-Ray seriously whatsoever in black society. That's, that's an unfortunate fact. But <clears throat> Loretta Lynch was talking about decriminalizing a lot of this stuff. So the New York, I think it was the New York Post came out with an article today. I think it was today or recently just really going in on black society where well, they're going to, Oh no, that's going to cause a criminal class and blacks are going to commit crime. And, you know, they tried to do this before by stopping schools from suspending unruly students, especially the black and violent ones. So these white supremacists, are, they, they're leaving their code words away. They're leaving their code words out the game and they're starting to be very blatant and explicit about their white supremacist views. Oh, yeah, he said once the reporter said follow Netta, her following sword because he was doing a good job covering Ferguson. And he only mentioned Netta because she was standing next to him. Bull to the shit. Bullshit. They try to make it seem like they randomly pick Netta and all these people. That's a crock of bullshit. Netta is hooked in with Ebony, that whole crew. It's not a coincidence that a lot of these Black Lives Matter people were already hooked in with that whole Ebony Bedwinch crew. That's bullshit. The, exactly. Those Black Lives Matter people, they put them out there and they say that they're your leaders because they know when black people start to make any kind of progress, if we make an inch of progress, the Black Lives Matter leadership will immediately start talking about gay and lesbian issues. They will change the agenda at the drop of a hat, and the white supremacists know this, and the white supremacists have funded them to do that. And they also know that the, the so-called Black Lives Matter, the D-Rays and all these people will also dissipate all the support for black people by trying to include everybody. A few weeks ago during the Oscars, y'all remember D-Ray, and I talked about this before, D-Ray did some little sucker shit talking about, well, a lot of people are talking about the Oscars um, and black people, but we got to understand that no Asians were nominated, no Hispanics were nominated. Nigga, fuck you. That's why I go in on little niggas like that. And I, I, I y'all know I, I've had a beef with him and, and, and Netta. You know, Netta, they called my show with that bullshit a couple of years ago. But when he did that sucker shit, I'm like, here he go. Here this nigga go. Here they go. They're sending their coons to do the dirty work. Talking about, well, the Asian... Nigga, we can't speak for Asian... Nigga, Asians are rallying against us right now. Let's just look Co collectively. I'm not talking about individually. You might have look. I got some cool Asian friends and all that, but collectively, because that's how I look at things. 
How are our groups dealing with each other collectively? I got some cool Asian friends. I know you got some cool Asian friends on a personal level, great people, but as a group, Asians as a group are now placing their bets against us as we see in New York right now. Asians around the country got together and fought for their right to kill black people with impunity. They showed their whole card when they did that move, which I knew that that's what they were rocking with anyway. So it's time for us as Melanoid people to circle our wagons. They're about to let that, that Peter Liang, they're about to let this dude go. They're setting it up to let that dude go. And people are talking about it might turn up out there in New York. But they're trying to set it up so that Peter Liang will get up out of here and go free like the white supremacists. And they put a coon-ass DA that Kenneth Thompson, Kenneth the Coon Thompson, boy, that nigga flipped like a pancake. See, black people, we got to stop celebrating so damn much. Because we start celebrating people and we don't know who they are, where they came from, what their deal is. And we were celebrating this Kenneth Thompson dude. We were celebrating the dude. Well, black people were. I wouldn't celebrate the nigga because I'm like, I like to see who's who up in, in office. But <clears throat> the Asian community, they got to that dude. See, that's the thing between the Asian community and other communities and black people. See, we do things without having an agenda. <clears throat> black people, we're used to doing things without having a damn agenda. And y'all notice when black people, we are marching and protesting all the time, but we, we, we have vague ass agendas. We be out here marching for we want justice, okay? How? Well, we want nonviolence. We want the police to stop. We want is, black people be out here for vague shit. Just like down in Ferguson, when I saw all this old vague shit going on, everybody just walking around, hands up, don't shoot. I'm like, okay, that's a cool start, but we need to, how, how are people going to finish this thing? What's the real agenda? Instead of just walking around in circles and then turning the shit into a pep rally after a while, because that's another thing, because there is no agenda at a lot of these so-called black marches. And because there is no agenda, sooner or later, the shit turns into a fucking talent show and a pep rally where people start playing and everybody's dancing and singing and rapping. That's why when we went down to Ferguson, me, Ola, and my crew, we went down there. We started to register people to vote. We have the recall for Mike campaign. I'm like, okay, look, all this energy needs to go into a recall because a lot of other black people were mentioning that. And we said, and we were talking about it too. And I was already chopping it up with politicians down there. We had some of the um, council people come down to my lecture I did down there. I was corresponding with sister who's a senator down there, Jamila Nasheed, beautiful, wonderful sister. We were strategizing on what we need to do to get these motherfuckers up out of office. And that's what we did. We went down there. We were registering people to vote. We had a whole recall for Mike campaign. So we had to focus the energy. <clears throat> because all that old dancing and singing and get in front of the camera with your mixtape, that's that's some corny bullshit that's going to have to stop because nothing gets done. The Asian community, you saw when they were out there protesting around the country, they were very specific. They were mentioning Ken Thompson by name. They were going after Ken Thompson, the whole Asian community. They were focused on Kim Thompson, Ken Thompson. They were focused on him because they knew he was the prosecutor, so that's the dude we need to focus on. Sounds like somebody got to that dude because for those who don't know, the black prosecutor in Brooklyn, it was a black man named Makai Gurley who was killed by uh, an Asian cop named Peter Liang. Peter Liang said he shot him by accident, but this guy, the, the, the Asian cop, was extremely negligent. 
He didn't go. He didn't abide by police protocol. He broke a lot of rules after he killed our brother. Um, he did not call the, the police station. He did not call his precinct. His ass called one of those evil, wicked ass unions. And that's another thing. These police unions are going to have to go. That's something we're going to focus on. These police unions are nothing but Nazi units, dude. These police unions need to be disbanded. They're nothing but Nazi units. Their whole thing is all about protecting cops who kill black people. That's all these unions do right now. That's all they do. But Liang called his union boss. He did not call the precinct. This motherfucker was calling to see how he can get shit covered up. And he let that brother die. So now the prosecutor, Ken Thompson, you know, he, he filed charges. There was a case. There was a, a, a trial by jury. The jury found him guilty. And everybody was like, finally justice. But I'm like this. We got to understand we are in a system of white supremacy. It ain't justice until the fat lady sings. And the white supremacists, they got too many tricks up their sleeve. That's like, just like with my man, Walter Scott, getting shot in the back. People were like, oh, yeah, we got it on camera. We got it on camera. I'm like, man, we are in a system of white supremacy. Just because this cop shot this black man on camera, lied, and got caught on camera planting evidence, as you saw when he shot Walter Scott, white supremacy, they can still twist and maneuver. The dude who shot Walter Scott, you know he's out on bail right now. That motherfucker's out on bail now. He shot this brother in cold blood. He should not have gotten no bail. This dude got, like, what was the bail? It was like 500000 It was a real low amount of bail money that this dude had to post up. So the dude who shot Walter Scott in the back, he's, all, he's walking around free right now. Until the trial. And... No telling, they might give him a slap on the wrist. But with this Peter Liang case, how many people we got in the room, by the way? Oh, yeah, we in here heavy. We in here heavy. But with the Peter Liang case, so he goes to trial, gets convicted. The Asian community, they are upset because they wanted to have one of their own kill black people with impunity. Somebody got to this damn Ken Thompson coon because a few days ago he put out a press release talking about, well, he recommends that Peter Liang don't get jail time. He recommends that he gets probation, house arrest, and naturally people are like, nigga, what the fuck are you talking about? Do you know how unheard of that is? Basically, Ken Thompson offered the dude a plea deal after he got convicted. When the fuck does that happen? That's a plea deal. What kind of cooning is this nigga doing? Ken Thompson offered the dude a plea deal after a conviction that don't ever happen, do you? You offer a deal like that before the case. That's you offer some shit like that before the case. You say, "Hey, look, you can get five years probation if you take you you plead guilty. You get five years probation. You get this. You get that. Take this deal because if you go to trial, the sentence is gonna you're gonna get the maximum sentence. So you're gonna get a stiff sentence." That's the purpose of a trial court. That's the purpose of spending all of those tax dollars for a jury trial. Because if they don't plea out, you're going to get the maximum sentence if you're found guilty in the jury trial. So now this dude goes to a jury trial, trial by jury, gets found guilty, and then you offer this nigga some type of plea deal arrangement? What the fuck is this nigga talking about? That's a plea deal. 
Now, if Ken Thompson pulled some shit like that on somebody else, if it was a, a white defendant or a white criminal, and he pulled that, do you know that he Ken Thompson would be arrested on federal charges for prosecutorial um, injustice or misdeeds? That do Ken Thompson would be investigated left and right. If Kim, Ken Thompson did that shit to any other group, offer some type of, which, which is essentially a plea deal. That's all it is. It's a damn plea deal after you've been convicted. If he did that to any other group, that nigga would be investigated, put on all types of misconduct charges, the whole shebang, man. That is unheard of. That is completely unheard of. You offer somebody a light sentence, which is not really a sentence at all, after they chose a trial by jury. So somebody got to that coon. This is why black people, we're going to have to start paper bag. And I, when I do my lectures, I told you guys about that brown paper bag game, meaning that you got to start greasing palms. You got to start showing up with suitcases of money and tossing it at niggas. See, we want to show up and pray and all that. That's what we got Melanoid Nation for, man. You see, with, with Melanoid Nation, man, we take care of a lot of shit financially. With Melanoid Nation, we, sh we come in with the paper. When we see people who need help, we know exactly what they need. We come in with the paper. We got to start being serious about greasing palms out here. We're going to have to start using that money game. We got to get that paper up and start utilizing our money to get people to do our bidding for us. We got to get serious about greasing palms, dude. You got to get, yeah, start still igniting it too. Yeah. Because... And that's another reason why we're having the coon train awards. See, we're going to have to start putting these coons out there publicly. Because the thing is, man, y'all, you, do you know how dangerous that coon Ken Thompson is with the shit he just pulled? With what he just pulled, and they allow this Peter Liang to go free, at this point, they're going to use this to set a precedent to say, okay, we don't even need a real excuse to shoot niggas no more. If they let this Peter Liang go, oh, they don't even have to come up with no good excuse like, oh, well, he was a criminal. They don't even have to come up with no shit like that no more. All they can say is, I blew this nigga's head off. Oops. My bad. They can use the oops, my bad excuse now. Oops, my gun. Oops. Oops, oops, my gun fell. Oops, my finger was on the trigger. Oops, I was in a bad neighborhood, so my finger was on the trigger. Oops, when you let Peter Leanne go, you got to let me go. So they don't even need a good excuse to blow our fucking brains out no more. If this coon kin just put bullseyes on the whole black community with the fuckery he just pulled. That coon just put bullseyes on black people around the country with that one coon-ass move he pulled. Because they don't even have to think of some good bullshit no more. They could use the oops, I done it again excuse. Oops, oops. That bullshit excuse about the gun, ooh, ooh, my gun went off. Those guns are not easy to shoot, by the way. Peter Liang violated all types of rules. Let me tell you something. If somebody, if a higher up in the Hispanic community did some shit like that and created um, a terror situation for other Hispanics, the Hispanic community would drag that bitch in the street. They would get his ass and drag him in the streets. Who is this oh no run dude? He keeps acting like he can't see me. I'm going to block him. He keeps talking about when does Tariq come on? Okay, okay. tell him to refresh his page because either he's trolling or this nigga is running uh, an Acer computer or something. 
the crazy. I'm, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm not going to block him. Maybe he he didn't refresh his page. Hold on. Let me say this. If you can't see me refresh your page. All right. Oh, man, those police guns are not hard, uh, not not easy to damn shoot. That shit he shot by accident. You, He pulled that damn trigger, which his finger shouldn't have been on it anyway. All that, ooh, my life, I felt I was in danger. I was so, ooh, I was in danger. Bullshit. What, no danger? That was just a random call. There was no threat there. There was no, they weren't going in there to investigate somebody specifically. That's a goddamn lie. They lied up and down in that case, and they got caught, and that's why the dude was convicted. Black people better get ready, man, because if they let this dude go, black people around the country, you should completely abandon Asian businesses. I'm saying that now. You should completely abandon Asian businesses altogether. I'm talking about Sally's Beauty Supply, Panda Express, all of them. If they're going to get together and allow some shit like that to happen, circle your wagons too. They, You shouldn't fund them. Because it was disrespectful for all of these people in the so-called Asian community to get together to try to have their right to kill black people with impunity. And we are the ones who fund these people. They eat and live off us. They eat and live off us. They do not eat and live off white society. They live and eat off us. And if this Peter Liang walks, starve him out. I don't have to eat Asian food. I really don't. And you don't either. They don't have anything that they're providing that's essential for us. We don't have to eat damn uh, um, orange chicken. You don't really need to go to Sally's Beauty Supply. You better patronize every black business that you find. And I'm serious as a damn heart attack. And I'm not talking about some little temporary thing, too. I'm not talking about no little temporary thing. I'm talking about starving them out. If you want to kill us, well, we're going to starve you. If you want to have the right to kill us off with impunity, we're starving you out. You will not eat off us. Take your ass back where you came from. I ain't with being a, a group a group of people's mule. We got to stop being everybody's fucking slave. We do not need what they're giving us. You don't have to go to their little liquor stores. You don't need that shit in there anyway. You don't need that blunt paper. Grow your own blunt paper if you need it. Grow your own hemp or whatever the fuck you smoke. You don't need what they have. They're not providing essential services to you. That was very disrespectful. And if that Peter Liang dude walks, you walk too. Walk away from their businesses. Go to a black beauty supply store and get your weave from there. Yeah, or mail order your weave. You can get them shits from other countries. Get them from the people over in Asia, not the ones here. Or India. Go get them from India. Because that shit is going to have to go. This shit where we sit up and we feed people and we empower people economically and they repay us by killing us with impunity and supporting their killers? No. No. No, thank you. Nail shops. There are plenty of black nail shops. Go get you a black person to do your goddamn nails. I know. See, we got this whole lazy shit where we just want to be like, okay, well, shit, the, the nail shop is close. Nigga, you sit up like a slave and let people, you give people the resources to kill you. You sit up like a damn slave and, and give people the resources to kill you, you deserve to die. If you sit your ass up and give people the resources to kill you, nigga, you deserve to die. See, that's the thing. See, black people want to play this game with black empowerment. You understand that? 
See, they want to sit up and play this game and be on this individual shit. Well, ooh, well, I love my weave. Ooh, I love my weave. I got to get my weave done. Fuck everybody else. I want to look good for my damn self. And the minute something happens to them, then they want to come back to the black community. Hey, hey man, they being racist, man. Can y'all help me get some money? See, I ain't with that flip-flopping shit. And a lot of black folks get to flip-flopping. There was a story. That's why whenever black people start discrimination, discrimination, you know, I watch niggas. That one black girl who was at one of those Trump rallies, she was out there protesting and they were calling her all types of niggas and cunts and niggas and niggas and niggas and niggas and cunts and cunts and niggas and niggas. They were calling her all types of shit and she was like, oh, look what they done to me. Somebody looked at her Facebook page. It was her and full of, full of white people on there hugging getting, and kissing them. Uh, somebody said she might even be a bed wench. This is crystal light, by the way. Ah, I've been, I gotta eat healthy. Man, I've been eating healthy. I've been taking away that sodium. I've been getting rid of all that salt. I gotta get my blood pressure down. My doctor said I gotta get that shit down. So I've been eating much healthier. I've been, I gotta cut the sweets and all that shit out of my diet. So instead of drinking soda, I drink crystal light. Crystal Light is actually good, by the way. Because I'm drinking sake. But we got to understand this, family. You got a lot of black people out here who try to coon and who try to engage in bedwinching. And then when it reverses on them and it backfires on them, then they want to run up and get support from all other black people. We got to watch niggas like that. We got a lot of that stuff going on. There was a story about these two black women who went to this white bar, it was like a karaoke club, and they were sitting there. They were about to do their little karaoke thing, and the people there were discriminating against them. I think they were telling them they need to buy some drinks or leave, and eventually they made the women leave. And... The story came out that they were they worked for the ACLU. They were some lawyers and all this stuff, and you know they might file a case for discrimination and all this stuff. And people like that, they want the black community to immediately rally behind them. But the thing is, this what were they doing at that bar? Because you can go to anywhere you want to go, but. It sounds like they were at that bar probably trying to do a little bed winching. Sounds like they might have been at that bar, that karaoke spot, trying to do a little bed winching and the shit backfired on them. And they were like, no, we want you negresses to get up out of here. And then they're like, oh, racism. You see? You got to watch that. You got to watch people like that, family. Because people try to hop on team blackness when it's convenient for them. Because you got a lot of coons and bedwinches out here. Okay, what are y'all arguing about in the room, man? Okay, somebody said, how are you a coon because you have a bunch of white friends? No, not saying that, but... That's suspicious. I'm saying that's suspicious. Because if I see your page, your Facebook page, and everybody you on there with are white, and you're the only black friend, and you all up in white dude's face, you look like you might be a suspected bed wench, then when they turn on you, don't come running to us. Oh, help me fight this racism. You don't want to really fight white supremacy. That's the problem. That's the problem, because a lot of people don't really, really want to fight white supremacy. They just want to get a little comfortable space in white supremacy for themselves. They're really not trying to fight it. <clears throat> They're really not trying to fight it. They're just mad because the white supremacists turned on them. So now they want black people to get revenge for them. 
and do the fighting for them so that they can slither their little asses back up under white mommy, white daddy. You see, they, they try to use black society. They're just like these other groups. All these other so-called ethnic groups will try to use us to do the, the fighting for them. And after we fight for them, they go slither right back under white mommy and daddy. They're, only, they're black when white supremacy bites them in the ass and it backfires on them. <clears throat> See, that's the problem. Because truth be told, man, we got a, a new generation of coons and young bedwinches. We got a lot of them. There's a whole new generation of them. I put a video, I, I wanted to play the video here. I wanted to play the video here. Hold on, now. let me see if I can find it. I, I really want to play this video of this kid. Okay, damn, how do I download it? Hey, bro, Hold let on. me take There's a couple of videos I want to play, but I haven't been able to download them. Hold on one second. There's a couple of videos I want to play. Hold on one second. Abort video. Get download button. Update. Hold on. What's this shit? Where did I get it? Oh, I did get it. Okay, I got that. I think I got it. Hold on one second. So download the file. Hold on. Let me see if that worked. Okay, that's one. I want to show this video of this kid. This dude. Hold on. There's a, a few things I want to show. Well, while I'm looking for this video, let me take a call because I don't want to lose my point I was making. What's up? Who's calling? Uh -oh. Hello, you here? Okay, guess my man ain't here. I get him in a minute. Can I speak on how the Clintons... I've, I've talked about the Clintons too much, man. I, I, I've, I've Go back and listen to some of my, my prior shows. I've definitely talked about the Clintons, man. So I'm not going to just keep regurgitating the same information about the Clintons. And by the way, y'all, don't forget, go to um, plantationcelebration.com. That's how you can get tickets to join me in Los Angeles for the first annual Coon Train Awards on April 9th. That's Saturday. That's in a couple of weeks at the Acme Comedy Theater in Hollywood, California. Let me see who we got on the phone. What's up? Who's calling? Hello, Mr. Elite. My name is April. I was um, I don't mean to throw you off, but I had a relationship question. Go ahead, April. Hey, okay, where you yeah, calling? April, April, where you calling from, sweetie? Yes, sir. I'm calling from Anaheim, so I'm from Chicago. Okay, so yeah, your boy, you don't sound like an Anaheim person. You sound like so what's going on with you, sweetie? What's happening? Um, I'm calling with a relationship question because I am um, currently in a relationship with my ex. And he is incarcerated right now. Okay. And we are planning on getting married. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> well, before you tear me up on that, um, I just wanted to ask your advice on how can I strengthen him and prepare him to make the transition from being... Um, I guess having a dusty nigga mindset from, you know, from that to being productive. Now, was he incarcerated out here in California? No, sir. He's in Chicago. Oh, okay. How long have you been out here? Three years. Three years, okay. How long has he been in? Four. Damn. Shit. Okay. And how, how long have you been daily? Did you meet him while he was in jail? No, sir. No, we got a long history. We've been dating off and off since 2002. 2002, okay. How does he yeah. now? How does he? He's 30, I'm 32. Okay, so y'all relatively young. So y'all been, been dating this dude off and on for, what, over 10 years since you were, what, 18? 19. 19, yeah. And you, do y'all have any kids? You got any kids? No, I don't have any kids. Okay. He has kids. He has kids. So this nigga's just been banging. He's doing thug nigga shit. Okay. 
basically, yeah, basically, yeah. He is a good quality dude, except he just he got caught up in the streets and he just he's attracted to dusty niggas. All his friends are dusty, and he just he just he got caught up in that. And so, um, I sense that he's ready to make a change. And while I know I'm not trying to play myself. I just want to, I'm not trying to carry him, basically. I want to give him what he needs to make the best out of himself. When okay, he gets so out here, because the plan is for him to come out here. Okay, so, okay, this nigga, sound like, look, to be honest, sound like this dude and got him a little, you know, a dusty nigga scheme set up. He gets out of jail. He's hollering at you. Oh, I'm going to get with you, because then he needs a place to stay. So now you're about to let the dude leech off you. Cause he's spitting that potential shit. You've been dating. You've been going off and on with this dude, bullshitting basically, for over ten years. And it's time for you to start looking at yourself and saying, "Okay, how come I am not? How come I'm not upgrading my shit? You're not upgrading your game." And what, what that noise in the background? What is that noise? I'm. Um, maybe it's my fan. I got the fan on. Is it still making? Oh, I got your show on. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mute that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Thank, thank you. There you go. That shit is killing me. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Now, you, uh, with this dude, and that's the thing, a lot of sisters, man, y'all choose, and because you're choosing this dude who basically doesn't really have a future. Uh, and a lot of my brothers in jail, I'm not shitting on the dude because he's in jail, but according to you, this dude has been doing dusty nigga shit all his life. All his friends are dusty. And you are talking about marrying this dude who's not even marriage material. Do you think this dude is marriage material, young lady? Uh, to be completely honest, I think that he has the potential to be. Okay, let's stop. Le okay, wait, let, okay, listen to me. Listen to me. Because marriage is, is, that's a business. Marriage is a business, all right? More than anything, people get I that agree. shit fucked up. People get that real fucked up about marriage. The marriage for love shit is recent, got it? People just recently started getting married for love. You get married because of a business arrangement, first and foremost. How is this dude going to provide for you and a possible family? Well, we working on it. And that's what I mean. I want to get him into the mindset to where he want to start his own business and just, you know, just build. That's what I want to do. But I'm trying to get him into that mind frame. Like, he's kind of half there, but... How he I, half there? He all the way in jail. How he half there, sweetie? He I mean, mentally, mentally, mentally. Mentally, my mentally. ass. Like, he's open to it. Okay, everybody's open to shit in jail. Yeah, you open to a lot of shit in jail. You talk, that's why niggas be open to religion in jail. You talking to in jail. He's the most holy spiritual nigga on the planet in jail. Hey, my sister. No, hey, I'm not hey, my sister, no BS, though. I, I really sense it's genuine. I really sense it's genuine. He's I mean, running I mean, jail like, nigga well, game, know, sister. They He's they running they jail won. nigga shit game on you. Stop. He's running jail nigga game on you and you falling for it because you desperate to be in a relationship. That's why you going back to your exes. When people start going back and forth to their exes, those are people who are just desperate to be in relationships. You're desperate to be in a relationship, so it ain't got nothing to do with old dude. This is about you. Why you choose to regress in your relationship. You're supposed to date up. You don't date down. And a lot of sisters are going to have to learn that. You got to date up. You're not dating up. You scavenging and rummaging and, and talking about the potential. Well, I can get this and that. I put this here together and I can make some. You're getting little bits and pieces of trash and trying to build something out of a damn junkyard. And we got to get out that mentality because if y'all have children, your, your kids are going to be another fucking hashtag. You understand? Because I, I have to clean up. Me and my organizations have to go in here and clean up behind people who did this half-ass relationship and half-ass parenting nonsense. So we got to start getting real about that. I'm not here to sit up and just sugarcoat this shit and be like, oh, maybe y'all could work it out. Y'all situation sounds raggedy. It's not an ideal place to raise no fucking kids because these kids are going to be raggedy, just like them Chicago-ass niggas, that hood rat who had a kid and the little boy, 10, 9 years old, got shot oh, by yeah. that dusty yeah. fucking bullshit right there because of half-ass yeah. parents 
fucking around, bullshitting, no agenda, going back and forth, flip-flopping. I ain't trying to see no more fucking hashtag kids. And you can look at a kid and tell he's going to be a damn hashtag by the hood rats and the dusty niggas who raised him. Because you can always, you can tell by them dusty nigga names that they give these kids. Little Tronquarius, all of these little names that the hood rats then gave their kids. That shit has to go. What you need to do, charge old dude to the game. Get your shit together so you can upgrade and get a dude who's going to be upgrading you so y'all can build something. That's what you need to do. I ain't trying to help you rummage some bullshit that you've been going back and forth with. If the shit ain't worked in 10 years, it ain't going to work, baby. You feel me? I. That's what it is. I, now, I know you ain't. it'll go in one ear and out the other, and you'll learn the hard way, but by that time, you too old and bitter and out the game to let it take heed. All right, so you need to take heed to the shit now. You probably won't because we get real stubborn, stuck in our ways, doing the same shit out of laziness, dating the same dusty-ass people out of laziness. If the shit hadn't worked in over 10 years, it ain't going to work. Got it? I feel you, and I agree with you. There you go, sister. Upgrade. That's the name of the game. All right, thank you for the call. Oops, hold on. I didn't mean to get that one on already. All right. All right. That's no calls right now. There you go. Yeah, I'm not about to sugarcoat nothing, man. That that shit is raggedy. That shit is raggedy to be damned. Raggedy, raggedy, raggedy. And I'm tired of y'all with these raggedy ass relationships in these raggedy ass situations and y'all trying to turn shit into sugar. I know she don't hear me. She That shit went in one end out the other. That shit went in one end out the other. He just going back and forth and dusty. Related. Well, he got he got potential. I know he all his friends dusty. He dusty. He in jail now, but he got so much potential. Dude, that you're not being a ride or die chick. See, a lot of our people, we're taught to be in a situation with a dusty motherfucker, you are ride or die. You ain't ride or die. You just a hood rat. There's a difference between a ride or die and a hood rat. A ride or die chick is somebody who's trying to build something with you and you're building something. And if shit goes bad for you, they stick with you to help you get through that so you can go back to building and upgrading your shit like you were already doing. That's a ride or die chick. A hood rat is somebody who look for folks who ain't shit like her. That ain't ride or die. Dating somebody who ain't about shit, who's running game about what they gonna do and they got potential and all. Fuck that. You ain't no ride or die. You just lazy and you hood radish. So let's stop all this bullshit that... Th Ride or die bullshit. I'm a ride or die trap queen. Fuck out of here. There ain't no trap queen. See, these songs got y'all fucked up. A lot of these rap songs got y'all fucked up. I'm a trap queen. My, my man selling that dope and I be riding for him. No, no, no. You're just a crack hoe. There's a difference between a trap queen and a crack hoe. You're just a hoe sitting around sucking dick for dope. Let's just tell the shit for what it is. You ain't nobody's trap queen. You ain't no ride or die. You're dusty, he's dusty. Two bum ass niggas sitting up being bummy. Don't let these dumb ass rap songs get you gassed up about your fucked up situation. If you ain't building nothing, if you ain't stacking nothing, if a motherfucker's going in and out of jail on some bullshit usually. And look, I've been to jail before. I'm not knocking dudes who've been to jail. I've been to jail before. You dig? So I'm not knocking cats in jail. I'm not knocking that. But her situation, where they're going back and forth, he got a bunch of kids, and they're going back and forth, and he's in jail, and he's going in and out of jail, all his friends are dusty. That ain't, that wasn't me. That wasn't me now. That's just some nigga who's just going to do some dusty shit for the rest of his life, sounds like. He just likes being a dusty nigga. That's just dust. You got that's the difference between a dusty nigga and some niggas who got caught up. 
Because dudes, it, it, when you're hustling and you're doing your thing out here in the streets, you always expect to get caught up every now and then. That's that's the price of being in the game. You'll get caught up. But getting caught up don't make you dusty. You got to tweak your game a little bit and then flip legit as soon as you can. But a nigga who just got a bunch of, a bunch of dusty friends and a bunch of bummy hood rats and all that old bullshit, that, that, that's just dusty nigga shit. That's dusty and bummy. You got to upgrade your stuff. You got to upgrade yourself. You got to upgrade yourself. Because all you are doing is becoming a hashtag in the making. And just like those bummy ass niggas in Chicago, the dude, his kid got killed. The, kid, the little boy was like nine or ten. It was so tragic. All of the dad is hanging around a bunch of dusty niggas. The mom is hanging around a bunch of dusty niggas. The mom was on... I see some twerk videos of her with her bad built ass. The worst shape ever. She's twerking. Shape fucked up. She got money for the kid's funeral. And this hood rat went out and bought a damn car. That's the kind of shit we got out here. That ain't no ride or die. That ain't nobody's trap queen. That's a dusty, raggedy hood rat and a bum ass nigga. And I'm tired of these dudes trying to, and women trying to make excuses for their dustiness and bummishness. Because right now, as black people around the country, we got to circle our wagons. We got to be on some thinking shit. We got to be about building an empire. And you start by building a family structure that's going to be strong enough to sustain a family structure. <clears throat> You gotta, you gotta bring, you gotta create a family structure that's strong enough to sustain an empire. We gotta be on a family structure thing at this point, because the shit you talking about, first of all, we everything we do is going to have to be about empowerment. Everybody you date is going to have to be about empowerment. Let me break some shit down tonight, man. I know she's crying, but it's a good cry. Let me preach this shit tonight. Because everything we do is going to have to be about empowerment. Our brother Neely Fuller talks about that. Everything you do is going to have to be a step towards melanoid empowerment. Because when the white supremacists do anything, it's about maintaining white supremacy. You understand that? Everything they do, every move they make, they say, okay, is this move going to maintain white supremacy or harm white supremacy? Every move they make, no matter how subtle it is, is to maintain white supremacy. Your moves has to be all about maintaining black empowerment. When you do things, you say, in the long run, is this going to empower my community as a group to replace the system of white supremacy with justice? That includes who you date. When you date somebody, you out with them, you vibing with them, you should be thinking, okay, if I date this person, will this person help me empower black people collectively? That's what you should say whenever you date somebody. Fellas, if you out with a chick with a burgundy fucking weave, with baby hairs that go up to here, with eyeliner around her lipstick, a big fucking lip ring, with the painted on eyebrows and three gold teeth and two kids and a knife wound and a tattoo, a Tupac on her titty. Is that woman going to help you empower yourself or your community? Just ask yourself, with this motherfucker in front of me, looking the way she looks and acting the way she's acting, am I going to empower myself or my community with this? Most likely, no. And women, when you get with a dude, and if this nigga's dusty, all of his friends are dusty, he got little illegitimate kids running around here, he's in jail currently, he's in and out of jail for the last 10, 20 years, marrying this dude, is that going to empower you as a community? Is you marrying this guy going to empower you as a community? Most likely, no. Because, sister, first of all, if you try to build something, 
and you become politically active or whatever, all they have to do is just get that nigga the powers that be and make him snitch on you because the nigga already has a jail record. So all they got to do is say, hey, look, we're going to put you back in jail if you don't give us some information. There's certain people that if you're on a certain level, you shouldn't really be fucking with like that. I'll use the example. Let's look at Housewives of Atlanta. Let's look at Phaedra and my man Apollo. I like Phaedra and Apollo. Apollo, he seems like a pretty cool dude. I like Apollo. And I like Phaedra. Phaedra seems like a cool chick. I like both of them. But Phaedra is dumb as hell marrying that dude. She's dumb as hell for marrying that dude. And I like Apollo. I got friends that are associates. Let me say that because I don't want to hear statutes of limitations. I know some people, some niggas that I've been knowing for years who are hardcore fucking criminals. I'm cool as hell with them. I like the dudes. They, they cool with me. But I wouldn't match make them up with somebody, let's say like my friend Aki. <laughs> Aki is the homegirl. But I wouldn't match make one of my thug ass homies with a person like Aki. These niggas will ruin Aki's life. Because they ain't for a person like that. Look, I got some cool criminal friends that I'm cool with. But my criminal friends are not cool with this crowd over here. Not shitting on the criminal friends, but his life ain't about this life. So Phaedra, being a respected lawyer, she's dating this dude who's a known criminal. So you date this dude and he starts doing the same type of criminal shit while y'all married, while y'all got a national show, which was the dumbest thing ever. You don't put a dude like that in a situation like that because that's really all he knows. Not shitting on the brother. Not shitting on the brother. But you don't put certain cats in certain situations knowing their background because that's just not how where they are right now. They got to build that shit up on their own. They got to learn the ins and outs of the game on their own. You can't pull a person who's been in the life like that with that type of mentality. You can't pull them into a situation and psychologically they're not there yet because they're going to go back to what they know. What's up, man? They're going to go back to what they know. Hold on. All right, let me let me take a real quick break. Hold on. Hey, hold on one sec. I'm going to take a... Let me... I, let me I'll take a real quick break. I'll be right back. Right back. Don't go nowhere. Hey.
Hey guys, sorry about that. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Sorry about that, family. Y'all, we here. We here. Uh oh. Hold on. Let me tell y'all to refresh the page. Hold on. Hold on. Wait. 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 Refresh. All right. All right. Refresh those pages. All right, refresh the pages, all right? Hello, family business. Oh, real quick, there's a lot of folks at my house. Yeah, I'm still doing Do what? Yeah. All right, I'm here. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, everybody refresh your pages. Retweet, let everybody, not retweet, but let everybody know to refresh your pages. I'm back. Just had a little quick family discussion real quick all right let me look at my chat room are we good we're good we good we good all right come on chat room let's load it up all right oh yeah memorial shirts they're going to be on sale pretty soon y'all can go to rekaelite.com to get some of those other shirts though the mora shirts will be popping soon the more rush shirts will be popping soon um i cannot wait to go on the road we're gonna have a great time on tour we're gonna have a ball we're gonna have a great time in miami on the more rust tour and don't forget go to morerust.com to contribute to the making of the more rust app that's m-o-o-r u-s wait the other way u-s M O O R U S dot com and contribute to the Indiegogo page for the new Morris app that we're working on now. We're making it do what it do. Now, now, there was a story we put on Melanoid Nation. There was a guy, the white boy named Russell Schiller, I think that's his name. There's a white dude who goes to, like, I think Howard University. And let's talk about the new generation of Negro bedwinches and coons. Ebony Magazine is up to their old Negro bedwinch shenanigans again. This white dude, Russell Schiller, he's a little white kid, goes to an HBCU, one of these little white dudes who seems like he has a Negro fetish. You know, he, he likes laying up with black women. So he, you know, runs that, oh, black women are so cute. You know, he, he runs the, I loves black women, your beauty. He runs a little game on sisters. And sisters are beautiful. You know, let's, let's be very clear. This is, I'm not saying that what he's saying is not true. But a lot of times these cats run that game so they can get engaged into what I call slumming and gutter sex. And highly educated. You think he's legit? I want you to call up. So this white dude created a hashtag called Black Women Are Gorgeous. And the Negro bedwinches, oh, they just melted. Ooh, this white boy just said we are gorgeous. So the website, Beyond Black and White, they did a story about him praising this white boy. And they made it headlines. And Beyond Black and White, it's a hardcore Negro bedwinch website. It's a website with nothing but desperate, coon, mammy, Negro bedwinches who are begging white men to date them. That's, that's what the whole site is about. It's about them begging white men to date them and how to find a white man and be submissive to a white man. It's the most self-hating, coonish shit you ever want to see in your life. Ebony is Beyond Black and White light. Ebony is the same way. They try to sugarcoat their bed winching, but they're the same way because Ebony wrote an article about dude too. A headline. Oh, the white guy, white man says black women are beautiful. White man starts a hashtag. They make it headlines praising this white man for saying black women are gorgeous. Now, black dudes understand this. Recently, these Negro bed winches over at Ebony and people connected with them, they were complaining about black men calling them queens. 
Who's trolling? Because I don't want to, I'm, I'm trying to focus here. Who's trolling? They were complaining about black men calling them queens. Because they were talking about, well, black men, they call me, I don't like no men. Black men call me no queen because they be having ulterior motives. They be having other motives. But the white dude said, okay, well, black women are gorgeous. Oh. Oh. So Ebony and all of these Negro Bedwinch websites are praising this dude, um, Russell Schiller, for saying black women are gorgeous. The white dudes say they're gorgeous. They put their guards down. They just run. They're eating it up. Now, people looked into this dude's Twitter account and they found, well, this dude is saying nigga, 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 nigga this, nigga that, nigga, nigga, nigga. Every other word is nigga on some of his posts. He's just going to town saying nigga. He, I guess it's like, well, because I can say nigga if I'm fucking black women. So nigga, nigga, nigga. Ooh, nigga. He's quoting rap. They say he was quoting rap songs or whatever. It was just a gratuitous use of the word nigga. And there was one picture that he put up of another white boy sucking a black woman's titty. It wasn't him. A lot of people think it's him. I thought it was him at first, but it's not him. It was a white boy sucking this black woman's titty and... The Russell guy was like, yeah, this was me in my freshman year. <laughs> so it's basically this dude is a suspected white supremacist. And a lot of people called him out on it. People are like, hey, wait a minute. This dude is using nigga too much. I ain't really feeling that. People start calling him out on his fuckery. Because let's be very clear. Let's be very clear. Because after people, black people were calling this little white boy out with all that, you know, you, black women are gorgeous, but yeah, nigga this, nigga, 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 yeah, nigga, nigga, nigga. Zebra gang and all this old bullshit. Well, okay. That that gutter sex bullshit. Nigga get bitches, nigga. I'm talking all that stupid shit. And people, including myself, were calling dude out. Do you know the bedwinches and coons that came run into this fucking dude's defense. The coons and the bedwinches were caping for this dude like crazy, especially those bedwinches at Howard. There were a lot of people at Howard. Ooh, I know him. He he ain't like that. He he cool. He down. So it sounds like Howard University is bedwinch central. We got a, a new generation of straight up bedwinches, dude. And there were a couple of coon ass dudes. He he down no. He down no. If the white supremacists can totally disarm you and subdue you by giving you a damn compliment, you're in a sad state. One sister told me on Facebook, but Tariq, I wouldn't think he I wouldn't say he a white supremacist. He just think he black. Her sister told me that shit. You don't think for a minute. He know he ain't black. Let's be very clear. A white dude, especially a suspected white supremacist, they know that their whiteness works for them. He know he ain't black. Let's get that shit straight. And miss me with all that. He grew up in the hood and all. Fuck that. Bullshit. Bullshit. Who, wait, who, what do we got going on in the, in the chat room, man? Y'all stop fighting. What's up, Lady More Natural? You said stop using profanity. You're doing your little girl's hair. Well, you, little girl need to be sleep. It's late, man. What's she doing up this late? But the way Negroes were caping for this dude, and let's be very clear. Any person who is white, white people are not dumb. White people are not dumb at all. Like Neely Fuller said, collectively, white people are the smartest people on the planet, and I agree with them. Collectively, they are the smartest people, and I agree with them because the thing is they can trick black people collectively like it's nothing. They run games on us all day and we buy it hook, line, and sinker, and they sit up and wink at each other, and black folks don't even catch it. They run game on us every day, and black people don't even catch it. 
They talk in code right in your face and black peoples don't even catch it. You'll sit up and, and defend them running game on you. They run large game. They run game. That's where the power is. Deception. Black people can easily be deceived. You got deceived 500 years ago and you're still getting deceived. This is why we can't break out of this shit. But they were caping for this dude and understand this. Because the white supremacists are the smartest people, they know Every white person knows at this point, especially a white adult, they know that black people collectively, generally, don't like white people saying the word nigga in any context. I don't give a shit if it's a rap song. Generally, they know that. The general consensus is, collectively, black people don't like white people saying the word nigga around them. That's a general consensus. If you've been around black people, if you've been around black people, you know this especially as a white person. You know this. You're not dumb. You know this. Okay, stop saying, okay, somebody's a troll, whatever. So the fact that this dude who knows that collectively, black folks ain't really cool with you saying nigga, the fact that you insist on doing it and not just doing it, but doing it in a gratuitous manner, that just shows that you don't really have respect for black people, black culture, black people collectively, and you're exerting your white supremacist privileges. Okay, I see where the person is trolling. Okay, I got him. I got him. I banned him out of here. Okay, he said white people are being afraid. Okay, I got it. I got him out of here. So don't come for Howard you. Well, call up. Because there's a lot of coons at Howard. And there's a lot of goddamn bedwinches at Howard. I don't know the number. But I know there's a lot. From what I've seen, the way they were caping for this damn white dude, this white supremacist suspect, there's a lot of coonery and buffoonery going on on that damn campus. He, he, he said the word nigga some years ago. He changed. He changed. The, the niggas were making up every excuse in the world for this dude. Well, you just, this is, this is some other shit they were saying. You just jealous because somebody else appreciates and loves black women. They were saying like real slave shit. This dude sitting up calling people nigga, nigga, nigga this and nigga that. And just because he gave you a compliment, you think this motherfucker love you? You that desperate for white love? Negroes are so desperate for white love and white approval. You will take you will drop your weapons. All they can they can subjugate you with compliments. They will subjugate you with compliments. They can black people are the only group of people who can be totally disarmed with compliments. They got your number. They know how much you love them. The white supremacists know how they can disarm you. They know how much you love them and are desperate for their approval. They know this. So the thing is, with this dude, he is a suspected white supremacist and also engaging in that gutter sex. Again, the, the white supremacist male, just because they have a Negro fetish, that ain't nothing for you to run around and pat yourself on the back for. They had Negro fetishes on them plantations. They've always had Negro fetishes. They've always slummed with us, black men and women, because it ain't just the sisters too. Black men, they've slum with us. They send their trailer trash down there to wink and blink at black men. And we go to shucking and jiving. I want to show this video of this dude, this, this black dude, dancing for this white girl he's trying to go to the prom with. I've been trying to download the video, but I've been having trouble downloading the video. 
But there's a video clip. It's a very short clip. I posted it on my Facebook page, and I cannot. It's not letting me download it for some reason. I wanted to show it. Of this dude, this black dude, he's at like a high school, and there's a white girl standing in front of him, and this nigga is doing like a dance routine. He's twerking and dancing, and he got two other niggas dancing with him. They choreographed some shit. Then he spins around and grabs some flowers from somebody and then offers the flowers to the white girl and like, go to the prom with me. It's some real... Our, our young people are little Sambos right now. We've created a generation of Sambos. Yeah, the moist dancing dude. I want to play that video right now, and it will not let me download it, man. Can somebody download that video off my page if you can find it? Visit yes, yes, send it to me, brother. Visit Black Houston. Yeah, it's it's not doing it to record it. The video can download only after login in the website via so what the fuck does that mean? Okay, what is this shit saying to me? Cause I really want to show y'all this. The way this dude was dancing with just so a white woman chose me. Ooh, I gotta dance for her love. It's real sad and coonish. But th that's the thing, family. Black people are so desperate for white love, we will let them engage in gutter sex with us. And the minute uh, the bed winching and the coon and backfires, all of a sudden, cats want to start acting black again. Because I get a lot of emails from sisters who date white dudes and they be telling me, well, my my white my white boyfriend's family, they don't like me. But he don't be taking me around his friends. Okay, you a bed wench. What part of you a bed wench don't you understand? And he's treating you like a bed wench. The last snowman. Where's the last snowman at in the room? Hold on. Okay, when I see the last snowman, I will ban him. I can't see him. There's too many people in the room. But the thing is, man, we, we got so many coons, the young generation of coons, and when it comes to empowering ourselves, a lot of these coons will sabotage it. A lot of these coons will sabotage. Okay, there we go. All right, snowman, I got you. Okay, I got Black's the last snowman. Yeah, he's always in here trolling. I've um banned this coon nigga before. Okay, yeah, I got him out of here. Yeah. Bo Cam. Uh, okay, Bo Cam. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a ban you, Vocamp, because you keep saying AEG is trolling, but you're trolling by just saying it over and over again, man. So I, I'm a ban you, because you just said that over and over again. So I, I had to ban you out the room, because that shit fucks up the flow of the show. So I ban you out of here. But we in here heavy though. But a lot of times, again, when black people start engaging in this gutter sex and this bed winching and cooning, they're perfectly fine with white supremacy until it, until it bites them on the ass. Until white supremacy backfires on them. Just like those sisters I said who went to that karaoke bar, the reason why they were the only black people there is because I think they were going in there trying to do some bed winching, hoping, hoping that some white cats were going to choose up on them, and it backfired, and then they came out with the Black Lives Matter t-shirts on. See, black people got this whole thing when bed winching and cooning doesn't work for them, then they want to run to black people to save them. Just like that chick out here, that actress from Django, when she was out here, y'all remember the story. I can't think of her name, but she had a white boyfriend. She played a bed wench in Django, and she was a bed wench in real life. She was out here in L.A. 
engaging in some type of gutter sex in the car with her dude. That's what they do. The white boy got her all in the car. I sound like he was finger fucking her, doing some degenerate shit, gutter slum shit, which is what they do when they get with black folks. He's all out in the car with her, groping, she on top of him, and they engaging in some kind of gutter behavior out in public. That's what they do. They get black folks and they, they do shit in public. They'll fuck you outside by a trash can. That's what they do. We're the, we're the gutter people to them. Somebody was like, what? Ugh. They called the cops. It's, they, they thought it was a whole turn and a trick. They called the cop on her. And the cop showed up. And then all of a sudden, she, she wants to put her Black Lives Matter shirt on. This is racist. You're doing this because I'm black. Fuck out of here. Don't start hollering black, black now because you got caught in bed wenching, engaging in gutter sex in a car with your little white supremacist boyfriend. Suspect. Because I suspect him of doing that. When you get black women and do all types of gutter shit, I suspect you're being a white supremacist. You want a ghetto gag with the sisters. Danielle Watts, that's her name. This is, you're doing this because I'm black. What if it? My dad's a lawyer. Ray! She started doing the Ray. Black people rally around me. Fuck out of here, bed wench. No. Oh, she started to, she tried to do the white girl cry. That shit don't work on the sisters. They're like, no, wipe them tears off your black ass eyes. You going, you going to get locked up. <laughs> you getting in the cuffs. The, the tears don't work. Black lives matter. <laughs> Shut up. Oh my goodness. Um, that's the footage. I'm trying to, I won't be able to see if I can download it from Instagram. Hold on. Okay, I don't think I can download it from here. Hold on. Hold on. No. Yeah, I can't download it from... Yeah, I can't download it from here. I want to show this, but I cannot download this from here. Hold on. Open, copy, save link as... Hold on, let me see if it'll let me save the link. Hold on. Nah, it's not, it's not going to let me do it. I can't. I can't save it. Yeah, I can't save it. Yeah, see, that's the thing, man. Don't don't try to get black people to rally around you when you're cooning and bedwinching backfires. Nah. Let me give you the link from... Or let me look at my Facebook page. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Uh, let, me, let me take a call, and I'll look at my Facebook page, and I'll find it. What's up? Who's calling? Hello. How are you? Hey, what's up? Who's this? This is Debbie from New York. How are you? Hey, Debbie. How are you, beloved? I'm good. I'm good. Um, congratulations on the baby. Thank you so Kamea. much. Thank you so much. And um, I want to back to what you were saying about the whole gender sex the sexual thing. Um, I was listening to Mimi Fuller, and he said that black people at this point shouldn't be occupied with sex. We are in a situation where we are at active warfare, we are prisons of war, and the last thing we should even be thinking about is having sex, even with each other, we should be focused on fighting white supremacy. And really get in relation to someone, like you said, you could be you know, like 200 questions you should ask them for such a partner before we even get involved with them. So can you elaborate on that? I'll take your answer off the air. Thank you, dear. Thank you so much. Yeah, mm -hmm. your brother Fuller talked about it. He goes deep. Now, I say this. I'm not as extreme as Brother Fuller because a lot of his, you know, suggestions are very extreme. He says that, you know, a lot of us, we shouldn't, you know, engage in sex. You know, I'm, me and my wife going to get it in, you know. I can, you know, totally agree with it. <laughs> I got to get it in with Peanut. My wife is fine. And he was, he said that, um, you know, black people shouldn't have sex with white people because we're in a system of white supremacy. We're, we're victims. We're prisoners. And 
technically, when a white person is having sex with a black person, be it a white woman or white male, they're taking advantage of that black person because the person, you're in a childlike state. You know, that makes a lot of sense. Now, I say black people, the, as long as you understand that when you get up out that bed, you're going to have to be about black empowerment still. You do what you do. The problem is too many black people do get confused. So I understand where Brother Neely is coming from because black people generally don't know how to smash and, and, and have sexual relations with a white person without getting turned out. Your, your mind ain't, a lot of the average black person's mind ain't mackish enough for that. You dig the average black person's mind ain't mackish enough. See, that's the a player mentality. A player, you can have cold, unemotional sex because that's what players were supposed to be. Like the, the max play, when you, you have sex, it's supposed to be emotional. It's just, you know, you get your physical thrill or whatever. You, you got to know how to differentiate between emotional sex and just physical sex. And a true player knows how to differentiate between the two. That's why the white supremacists are true players. That's why they can have sex with a black person and then get out that bed and still try to maintain white supremacy. They have no qualms about maintaining white supremacy. And just like I've been talking about now, the average black person, when they have sex with a white person, black man or, or black woman, black people get turned the fuck out. And a nigga get him some white pussy. He don't know how to act. He starts dancing and, you know, buying flowers. And the nigga don't know how to act. This nigga will sell the whole community out for some of that white pussy. Niggas don't know how to act after they get... You know, a white woman have sex with a nigga, he don't know how to act. That nigga goes by a... He'll go by a banjo and just start plucking. Niggas don't know how to act when they get sex with a white woman. And with black women, too. When black women get a white male, nigga, they'll sell the whole black community out. Black women, a lot of black women don't know how to differentiate between... Um, empowerment and subjugation. Okay, a visit. I'm gonna look at. I'm gonna check my email. I'm gonna do it while I'm talking. I'm trying to, you know, do a million things. Let me let me look for it. But a lot of black people don't know how to not get turned out because black people collectively, your self esteem is so goddamn low. Black people have such a low self esteem. Who is this? Who is this? Bolster screening, okay. Um, okay, there you go. Where's the video? Okay. Oh, hold on. Save computer. Hold on. Hold on. I'm saving it now. Hold on. My man, Visit Black Houston. Shout out to Visit Black Houston. My man, Visit Black Houston, has tours that goes around to different eateries in Houston. Okay, this is the video. And... What's your website? VisitBlackHouston.com. I've been advertising my brother on the show. But VisitBlackHouston.com. I think that's the um, the um, website. All right, so let me play this clip of this dude. It's, it's like a real short clip. It's about, what, seven seconds. Of this black dude buck dancing while asking the girl to the prom. This nigga made a whole routine out of it. And put it out there like that. All right, all right check this out. Boy, y'all niggas will go out when well, this a white woman. This nigga wouldn't do that for no sister. Y'all know that nigga wouldn't. Have, you don't do all that dancing for no sister. This nigga won't even pick the sister up to the prom. You get a sister. You you make the sister take an Uber to the prom, nigga, while you meet her there. But this nigga was that nigga's like a broke fucking usher, cooning it up for that white girl. Boy, that nigga. You got a white girlfriend, that nigga got him some white pussy. This nigga's dancing all over that damn school. That's the and that's what Brother Neely Fuller was talking about right there. That's what Neely Fuller was talking about right there. Black folks can't handle white sex. 
the average black person, they can't handle it. Look, I, I've been with Asians, white girls, the whole shebang back in the day. Once I got through smashing, I'm like, okay, time to go build for me. I ain't, I ain't let them turn me out. I didn't go cuckoo for vanilla, for vanilla puffs. I try to listen to the cows sometimes when I can. I don't know when my brother Gus comes on, but I like Gus, though. Gus is very thorough. My man from Visit Black Houston, when is your next thing? Because I know I'm advertising on the show. Let everybody know when the next tour of the restaurants in Houston will be. Because if you're in Houston, y'all need to holla at my dude. Let me ask y'all this. Does this damn... Um, um, what is this shit? Crystal light? Does this shit fuck with your bowels? Because it's got my... I got the bubble guts. Hold on. I got a little spirit on me. This Is this shit... I got to look at the ingredients. Because I got the goddamn bubble guts right now. I got to check. I got to see what's in that. And I hope it ain't no maltitol in it, just like them damn peanut brittles I ate some years back. I told y'all I did a whole show about them, that maltitol. I did a whole show about that. Just had some lemon. Crystal Light is cool. It doesn't taste bad. But this shit is, is creeping up on a nigga. Say Crystal Light is no good. It don't taste bad. I yeah, Gus is deep. Gus says some real good stuff. Yeah, that's my man's link. Um, Taste of Houston, April 9th. That's when he's having the thing. What, what y'all doing to the Texas lady? Stick the plain water. I might have to do that, man. What are they sweetening that shit with? Because something is giving me the damn bubble guts. There's fake sugar in it. There you go. Where are my Dallas people, man? A lot of people from Dallas are coming to my lecture out there, man. Shout out to all my Dallas people. Y'all can get tickets to join me in Dallas. I'll be in Dallas on April 29th. That's at TariqLive.com, TariqLive.com. Um, get your tickets to join me in New York at TariqLive.com, New York on the 25th. And I'll be in Houston on the 30th, Miami on the 23rd. So we're going to make it pop off. Oh, the baby name book is upstairs. The baby name book is upstairs. I, I forgot to bring it down. But... um. Speaking of the South, there was something that happened in Florida. I think there was a, an incident that happened in Florida. And, and this is where the niggatry is going to have to stop, family, because let me tell y'all something. The white supremacists, they allow niggatry to go on and they'll give you enough rope to hang yourself. The white supremacists will, they'll sit up and let you sell dope on a corner. They'll let you get nice and comfortable with selling dope. And then when it's time to start filling up the prisons, they'll swoop down and start hitting everybody hard to justify locking your asses up. See, dope, they let dope be sold. It's all a setup. It's like like that TV show Bait Car. They, they, they bait you into doing something. They create the situations, bait you into doing it, and then punish you for the situations they created. That's how white supremacy works. And you know, online, they let black people post up fight videos left and right. They, lo they love a nigga fighting. Black people fighting in groups, fighting in crowds. They let you fight till you're blue in the face. You got world star. World star! They, that's become a cultural thing now. Niggas fighting and yelling world star while people are beating each other's brains out. So now... Somebody, I think it was in Florida, there was a, a, a Negro plantation fight, 
and somebody got killed. A, a guy got killed in one of these fights. Quasia, yeah, it's okay if Gus calls. Yes, it, it is. So somebody got killed in one of these Negro fights. These slave fights. I call them plantation fights because usually they're in front of some housing project and the fight is over some stupid ass shit. So this fight, I think it was over two girls were fighting because of a boy. Then their families got involved and everybody's beating the shit out of each other. Some dude got killed. And then about nine or ten of them got charged with murder. So all the main people involved in the fight, they all got charged. And that's what they're going to start doing. I'm not surprised. What they're going to start doing, not only are they going to charge they, it's that all-in shit we've been telling y'all about. Not only are they going to charge the people participating in the fight for the same crime if somebody gets killed, they're going to charge the people for filming it. They're going to charge you as an accessory to murder. So this shit where you think it's cool to sit up and film people fighting when somebody gets killed... You going down too. Just understand that. These white supremacists, man, they got this game rigged against you. That's why everything you do, it has to be about black empowerment. So when you up here chilling and you see a bunch of people fighting and you pull your camera out, think, is this going to empower anybody? Is me filming this stupid ass shit going to empower anybody? except white supremacy. That's why I said with the new Morris app that we got coming, that's one thing that we're not going to have. We're not going to tolerate plantation fight videos. That shit ain't happening. And it's not about censorship because I want people to come to the site. It's a social networking site. You should be able to do whatever you want to do. But that's one thing I don't really want to tolerate because it has nothing to do with empowering anybody fight videos is niggerish. It's detrimental to black progress. I don't want no parts of that around what we're doing. Yeah, somebody keeps saying is Gus calling. Yeah, Gus can call up. Yes, whoever's asking me that, Gus can call up. I have no problem with Gus calling up. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, Tyree. How you doing? This is Tyra calling from Las Vegas. Hey, Tyra. Your name is Tyra? Yes, Tyra. Tyra, Tyra sounds kind of cute, don't she? How old are you, Tyra? Cute. How, how old are you, Tyra? I'm, I'm 40. Okay. She's a seasoned sister. <laughs> yes, indeed. But she don't look 40, though. She uh oh look 40. Oh, what you look? How old do you look? Uh, well, just recently I was told I look 25. So I usually get between 25 and 30. Now, how old is the dude you date? Um, I usually date younger guys. I, hear, I can hear it in your voice. Go ahead. Yeah, I guess they, they usually around 30. <laughs> Go ahead and rob that cradle with that breast milk. Girl! <laughs> breast milk is so delicious. <laughs> so what's on your mind, Tyra? Well, I actually have a relationship question for you. Okay. Go ahead. So um, I had recently met this guy. Um, he came to, to Vegas. Um, he, he's from L.A. He has his own business. He has businesses. You know, he has a solar company uh, business, and he owns a few dollar stores. Um, and, you know, we were getting to know each other, and it pretty much ended before it started um, because while we were getting to know each other, you know, we, we vibe. Everything was on point except for when it came to religion. And now, so— Hold on, wait. Let's stop for one second. Now, this guy, is he Mexican or black? He's black. Okay, but well, he's on. He don't. He owned dollar stores, so that that's it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, but yeah, and so um, you know, he he believes in God and everything, and you know, I told him that I don't, you know, I'm I'm not following, you know, what Christians believe of God and Jesus and everything, and he feels as though that he has to have someone that is equally yoked, and he didn't want to continue on because of that. Damn. Okay. Look at the brother had strong religious convictions. I would say, okay, so what's what's the actual dilemma now? So he's moved on. So what's the dilemma? I mean, I just, I, I just, I kind of, I was willing to accept the fact that he was a Christian. Um, and I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't believe him, you know, I, because, you know, like you said, I'm more about black empowerment and, and getting and becoming more conscious. And, and so he just, he, he just could not continue on with, with anyone like myself. 
even though I had all the qualities that he said that he was looking for in a woman. And, you know, he even tried to, to convince me to, to sort of see things his way or try to, you know, sway me. But I was, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm setting my, I'm not going to try to change you. So don't, you know, try to change okay, me. There we you go. Know, now, I, I see, that's that. what, that's the thing that threw the brother off. See, that's the thing. Because it was like, well, look, I'm going to do me. And that's that's the thing that threw the brother off because if a dude is into a female, dudes don't really trip too much on the religion thing. That's not something that we trip off of. We'll date a goddamn Hindu if she's cool enough and the coochie's wet enough. So you and this guy, y'all were vibing, y'all were bonding, and y'all started talking about religion, which is a touchy subject. But the way you approached it, you were like, well, I'm just set my ways. So now what happened was you came across as a person who is difficult about being submissive. And that was the dude's real problem. It's not religion. Understand what the real problem was. It was your lack of being submissive. Hmm. You feel me? Has he said anything about submissiveness and combativeness with you? No, he really didn't say anything about that. You know, the mostly he was just talking about building together and, you know, finding out where my head was at and what I was trying to do uh, with my life. And, you know, that's basically what basically what the conversation was. You know, it was, you know, just getting to know each other. Right, right. And, and he, you know, wanted to come out here. And, you know, he comes to Vegas a lot because of work. You know, he does a lot of business out here. And so that's really, you know, what was the basically just talking about building together and what we're wanting in a relationship. Now, you let know, me ask you this. Was from, the dude, is the dude African? No, he's, he, he's actually, he's from Texas. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, he was, he, I mean, he, he, he's aware, you know, he's, he's experienced a lot of racism being uh, brought up in, in Texas. Right, and, right. and And so, I mean, we, we're kind of on the same length, wavelength as far as that goes. But as far as the religion, not so much. Yeah, that that was something that y'all could have worked out. See, you shouldn't have. I thought so too. Yeah, yeah that's something that y'all could have worked out. Now, did did he smash? Did he hit that? By the way, no, it was it was too new for us oh. to even get to that point. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I I would have said that with you, you could have been a little more like, okay, I, I'll listen to your views. Now you're like. I ain't going to convert or no shit like that, but I'll, I'll listen to what you have to say and I respect your beliefs. So there should be a, there should have been a general respect there for each other's views because when you date somebody, you know, everybody's not going to have the same views right away. So a lot of times um, when you get into relationships, you can slowly see where a person is coming from and they can see where you're coming from and you can see where the truth is because eventually, look, I, look I'm not... You know, I don't believe in um, white Jesus, all that stuff, because I'm a historian. I'm, I believe in truth. You understand? Mm -hmm. And when you're with a person, you're going to sometimes just bring shit to the table as far as logic. Don't put no emotions in it. Just talk logically to a, a person like that brother who's an adamant Christian or whoever. And... Mm -hmm. Talk about what's going to empower you as a group. So when you're with a person, for for example, with this guy, see the conversation should not have been so combative. That's the first thing. Because sounds like y'all well, wasn't combative. It was like a really a good dialogue, and and we were discussing it. Um, it wasn't and combative. I, our conversations wasn't really like that. He was very receptive to what I had to say, and I was very receptive to what he had. You know, I'm forty. I don't. I'm, I'm not. You know, I'm. I'm I'm with all what you're saying. I was, you know, I will listen to what he had to say. Mm -hmm. And I respect his views because I used to be a Christian myself. Yeah. So, and I, I'm not going to, you know, shun anybody or try to force my beliefs on them. I'm going to accept them for who they are. I'm not going to try to change nobody right. because they have to become awake, awakened on their own. Right. It's right. not going to take me to do that. Exactly. Especially a person that when they grow up in a certain religion and then, you know, at, how old is that brother? How old is he? Like 30? He, he just turned, he was 30, he just turned 36. Okay, so yeah, he's, he's getting closer to 40. So when you got a person, he's set in his ways. That's what he grew up believing. So you, you respect that. And if you were to get into a relationship and you started to get to know each other, you drop truth and this dude will see your views instead of you getting into a thing where I'm just going to do what I'm doing. I ain't going to change. No, no, no. You don't, That's not how you do. Just look. I respect your views. We're going to be we in a relationship. We respect each other's religious boundaries. But let me drop mm -hmm. some of this knowledge on you. Let me show you this Hidden Colors DVD. 
Now, right, and I tried to, I, oh, I tried. I was like, you know, you should really watch him. <laughs> I tried yeah. that, Tariq. I swear to God, yeah. I did. And he was like, well, how did you even come to, you know, I was like, well, you know, have you ever seen him? You should, you know, he, he wasn't, he wasn't really trying to hear that. And, you know, no. he, uh, it was he basically, you know, I'm trying to find a wife. I'm dating to find a wife. And you don't, if you don't believe what I believe, then I, I, there's no point okay, well, in going further. Well, well, well you, that nigga might have been a goddamn coon, low key. You know, that could have been a possibility. Because, again, with a nigga, when a dude is overly religious like that, and, ooh, I get, if you ain't about the Lord, the Bible, the church, you know, there's some fishy stuff going on there. You, you dig? Mm-hmm. There might have been some other what? shit going on. This nigga might have been. I, mean, on the I, was, I was kind of wondering. He did also. He he's a retired police officer oh, as well. Okay. So I was I was I was hoping you know. That but then he started to tell me like his experiences with white supremacy. So that's how I was like. Well, that maybe, nigga maybe. is a low key coon. There's one of those shows, The Preachers of Atlanta. They got this dude who's a preacher and a cop, and he's such a fucking coon on this show. I know y'all seen it. Y'all look at the show Preachers of Atlanta. And there's a cop on there, a black cop. He's also a preacher on the side. And he's the biggest fucking coon ever. And a lot of these black cops are trained to be coons. I knew there was something going on with that nigga. He's, there's a coon alert going on with him. Black cops are trained to be coons. You dig? Mm-hmm. So that's just a coon you got. And they have to justify their coonishness by hiding behind religion. So you you probably did good by charging that nigga to the game. You don't want to be in a relationship mm-hmm. with no coon. You you no. did cuz then you know he'll they have to justify their bullshit. Nah, that's that's cool. You'll find some other dudes. What you look like? Um, you can find me on Instagram. I'll follow you. Okay, hold on. Let me I'm look. under the model Tyra. Hold on, I'm going to look that up right now. Hold on, right now. Cuz I like to see what people are looking like. <laughs> Real quick, let me see the model Tyra. Just that the whole word, the model Tyra. Yes. Like Tyra Banks, spell it like that. The exactly mo- the same. Tyra. The model Tyra L. Yes. Okay, there you go. Look at you. Look at Tyra looking fly. I'm gonna follow Tyra. Look at Tyra. Got the roomy. Whoa, Tyra got the breastuses. Is that you with the breastuses? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, trust me. Hey, all Those my brothers. my 40 year old breakfast. Yeah. It's, it's, y'all brothers better get up there and campaign. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, Tyra's holding it together. Look at Tyra. Man, y'all brothers better get up there to Vegas while she's still fly. <laughs> the, the, uh, are these your kids on here? Yeah, with Dr. Umar? Yeah. Yeah, those are my, two of my kids and my nephew. Okay. Oh, yeah, Tyra's fly. Y'all better get it while she's fly because she. In a few years, she might get get some of them buffets up there in Vegas, <laughs> and then she show up looking like this. Hold on. For me, a real man, you gotta have, you gotta be skinny, you gotta be sexy, you gotta have a big long dick. Like for real, who I like my man, my, I like my man skinny with a long dick, with a big dick. That's what I like my man. Uh, so if you, if that's you, you from Indiana, and you gotta look good, so you gotta be sexy. I'm saying I'm looking for me a real man. You gotta have <laughs> You gotta be sexy. Oh, y'all better holler at Tyra. Tyra looks good. Tyra got them breastuses all popping out. Okay. Well, my Vegas players, I know she's about to get how many friends she got now? She's about to have about five thousand friends. Friend requests. Oh, she's about to, she got like, yeah, she only got a couple of hundred now. By the end of the night, she's going to have a couple of thousand. With them breasts poking out the way they poking out, she's going to have a a few thousand of them. You dig? Who is Ace 47? Ace 47 is trolling. What you talking about, Ace? Yeah, yeah, Tyra got it popping and everything like that. But yeah, don't forget, man, y'all get tickets to join me at the Coon Train Award, the first annual Coon Train Awards here in Hollywood at Plantation Celebration 
Plantationcelebration.com. Plantationcelebration.com. She got a couple of kids. Eh? Yeah. You know, I saw, um, did y'all see the whole video that Cat Williams, that fight that um, that kid had with Cat Williams? I saw the whole video of that. And that's the thing, family. We got to understand that you got to be safe around dusty niggas. When you get around dusty niggas, unfortunately, there's always somebody who's trying to come up off you. There's always somebody trying to come up off you. Now, Cat was doing the right thing. Cat was basically, look, I love Cat Williams. Cat Williams is a real dude. And real dudes, you know, he. I, I guess Cat knows the fakery that goes on in the industry. So knowing that, being a real ass dude in a world full of fake motherfuckers, man, it's a lonely world. So any kind of contact with anybody real, you take it. So a lot of times... With kids, kids keep it 100. So he's out there just kicking it with the kids. He's in the hood out there in Gainesville, you know, playing soccer with the kids in the hood. And, you know, they filming him or whatever, but my man Cat should have had some security out there with him because you got to understand, unfortunately, you're going to have a few dusty niggas out here. You're going to have people who appreciate you but then you're going to have some dusty niggas out here trying to get a rep raised by a raggedy ass single mother who is a hood rat, who has a hood rat mentality, who has given their sons hood rat mentalities. So a hood rat tries to come up off niggas and they teach their little dusty sons to do the same thing. Come up off another man. He can't really, he ain't got enough game to come up off a woman. So you can try to leech off another nigga. So Cat is out there playing ball with the kids. And from what the other kids said, this one little dusty boy, the little 17-year-old who fought Cat, he was planning on doing something slick. From what the other kids said, the, the little dude was planning on kind of egging on a fight so Cat could get at him, so Cat could hit him. The dude was playing. That's why everybody was filming. That's why everybody was filming because he told him to film because he was going to start something. So they were playing and he kept talking little shit and saying low key shit to Cat, trying to egg him on. And Cat was walking off and Cat sat down and the kid was still talking at him, trying to get Cat to do something to him. So, you know, Cat punched the dude to kind of get him up out of his face. I don't think Cat was really trying to him do it up like that because Cat is already in trouble. So I think Cat was taking it light on dude because, you know, if you really him dude up, you know, the dude would have been suing. <clears throat> no, Cat had, you know, little boy, get off me, little boy. You know, because if Cat really did something to do, you know, let's be real. They would have revoked his bail. They would have locked him up, you know. But, my man, you can't be going out there, man, like that without some people with you, dude. That's just the name of the game. That's unfortunate, man. You shouldn't have been out there with no people with you, man. You got to have people with you, dude. You can't be out here like that. You got dusty niggas out here who don't respect the game. And the little dusty-ass boys out here giving interviews now, this is his come-up. That's all the attention this nigga's ever going to get in life. That's what dusty motherfuckers know. Aggression. Aggression and get attention by all means. You dig? But it is what it is. Y'all, y'all, who is y'all talking about? Y'all arguing with each other in the chat room, man. Y'all, come on. Said Tyra's a freak. Yeah, you got to have some people with you, man, to thwart that shit before it even goes down. See, that's why I when Suge was rolling with Cat, none of that shit was happening. When Suge was rolling with Cat, none of that bullshit was happening. You dig? And, you know, hey, it is what it is. All right, let me get up out of here, man. I got to go chill with the fam. Hey, man, get tickets to join me. On my lecture tour, TariqLive.com. 
All y'all thirsty niggas, don't be thirsting too hard on Tyra. I know y'all niggas, when y'all see them breasts, y'all gonna be acting a fool. So y'all chill out. Get your spirit right. And um, I'm gonna holler at you guys on my Wednesday show. Go to TariqRadio.com to hear the podcast. Go to TariqLive.com to get tickets to join me. Go to TariqElite.com to get the fresh gear. All that good stuff. Much respect to you. Love you too, S4QM. You 